Welcome guys, my name is Jackson and today we're going to, be going to be building a infinite random world generator together in Unreal Engine 4. If you're at this video, you've probably already seen a demo or a trailer or some sort of introduction so you already know what you're in for. But basically what we're going to be doing, if I just paint a picture of it, is we're going to create a component for a player controller that you can just drop in your game to any character you want the player character and as they move through the world uh, the world streams in in front of them and disappears behind them so what you get you know with a really large render range around the player is the sensation of the player moving through a world that goes on forever you can't have an actual infinite world loaded into a game all the time because it takes too much memory for your computer but what you can do is what I just said is you can load levels as the player moves and unload levels as the player moves and give them the illusion of the world being infinite by shifting the world with the player so that's what we're going to be building today and it's actually quite simple um, if you know what you're doing and I'm going to show you how to do that today so just to sort of lay out how this is going to work, I've written some notes here which are up on the screen right now. Um, I call this pseudocode, so it's like a sort of skeleton plan of you know how you're going to do the logic. It's the logic before you actually do the actual programming. Um, but before I run through that, let me just show you. So I've just got two pictures here, okay, which I'm just going to show you to sort of demonstrate what we're doing. Imagine the player at the center of this grid, right, at coordinates 0, 0, and you've got an axis this way, which could be your x-axis, and an axis this way, which is your y-axis. What we're doing when we're generating an infinite world is as the player is moving through the world, we're generating a grid of tiles around the player at some render range. So say you've got a render range of three units. Your player is here at the center. What we're going to be doing is generating tiles up to three there, and across to three here, if you can see the magnifying glass as my cursor, right? So if you follow my eye, right, it's a three by three grid around the player, like that. And then as the player moves up to say this coordinate up here at um, one on the Y and zero on the X, we're gonna generate that same three by three grid, but now it's gonna be translated up here, right? So around like that. It's gonna go from something like that anyway <laughs> up to positive 4 and negative 2 and so as the player moves through the world their coordinates are going to be changing which you know these these distances might be like 10,000 units apart in unreal units you know but on our coordinate grid it's 1, 2, 3 etc these refer to the tiles right so inside each of these tiles you can have any combination of actors any static meshes um, you know blueprints characters houses, NPCs, like fucking anything. And you can rotate the tiles randomly as you want. Um, and as the player moves through the game, these are all being spawned and they're being generated from a seed as well so that we can regenerate the same map every time that they play. Right? Um, and one other thing that I'll show you is just this unit circle picture. So rather than generating in a square where the ones in the corner are a lot further away than the ones, um, you know, right here at the perpendicular thing to the edge, whatever you'd call that. We're generating it in a sphere as well. So what we do is each time we generate a tile is we're just checking if they're inside this spherical radius. So all the tiles are equal distance apart. Um, so this is sort of like a, an image of how that's gonna look. We're gonna be generating all these tiles on the edge that are inside the circle and just ignoring the ones that are on the outside. Okay. And then, you know what, we'll iron out the details as we go through this. Because there's a few little wrinkles, like when you want the player to spawn, how to get it to work using a seed, how to have different tile probabilities, and how to rotate your levels, and how to load them smoothly, and things like that, and which nodes to use. So you know what, I think we might just get into it. Thank <laughs> you. 